Nachos Amigos, and welcome to Harajuku, a podcast about East Asian pop culture from a couple of guys from the East Coast of the U.S. Uh, we're here, gathered once again, talking about the East Asian pop culture, talking about the things on, on in the world of K-pop and, and, and other places as well, K-pop, J-pop, and more, uh, but mostly K-pop. Uh, I'm Petey Rave, your man with no plan. Here with me is my attacking partner, my partner in crime, my right hand man to my left hand side. We got Brandon Cooper, aka King Cass. How you doing, Cass? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. I'm doing. I'm doing. <laughs> we're all doing. Uh, we're all doing. Uh, we're also both working retail, and it's almost Black Friday. So. <laughs> speaking speaking of that, I had a funny moment today. That should have, in in all right, ended in a question, <laughs> and it didn't. But this girl was in the store, and I was like, "Hey, do you need help with something?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm looking for this thing. I can't find it. I looked over there. I don't know what it is." I was like, "All right, well, what? You know, well, what are you looking for? Obviously." Um, cause I can't read your mind. And she's like, I'm looking for the BTS her. And I was like, oh, all right. And I was like, well, right, hold on. Show me which one you're looking for. It was like, all right, cool. And I was like, I think I know where that is. It's probably over here. And I was like, in any other world with any other person, somebody would have, she, she would have said that same exact co- sentence. I'm looking for BTS her. And somebody would have been like, the fuck is a BTS? <laughs> She just lucked but out. But I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I got you. <laughs> K-pop fans, you know, helping each other out, you know. Yeah. Uh, this is a beautiful moment. Uh, she wasn't I, getting that other one, though, because I got that hidden away from myself, that black one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I have that back there somewhere. I think yeah. here. Here. There it is. Uh, of course, we talk about East Asian pop culture. Uh, of course, to start off every episode, talk about what's new, talk about what's going on in our uh, and what's caught our attention uh, since we last gathered. Uh, Cass, what 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 what's mm-hmm. caught your attention since since we last did an episode? <laughs> no, well, all right, you know what, I, I I am going to talk about the music I brought, but I still want to talk about. There is a big push of K-pop moving into. Tr- terrestrial retail yeah like working in retail i have noticed like we're getting more and more things that are definitely deciding they want to they want to make that bigger push of k-pop in general like bts is definitely leading the charge like there's all these like magazines about bts and like all this stuff that is is going in into market and i i think this is that thing that we're we talked about where you just oversaturated um but you 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 direct target and oversaturate at the same time and that's what they're doing and they're and i think this is the right thing to do for bts and k-pop in general yeah which is really exciting uh the fact that you can get the fact that you can buy the uh, the bts albums on amazon (laughs) You just buy them there. And yeah. they're shipped they're sold by Amazon too. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you can buy them in a dying ass retail store too. Like yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um all right, so let's move on to the music for this week. Uh starting off, uh we got EXO uh with their new song Tempo, which hit or miss. Very hit or miss. If you're in the EXO, you're gonna defend it no matter what, because you're one of those people. If yes. you're me, you had to listen to it three times, and then on that third time, you still questioned it, but you were like, yo, this beat is fire. This beat is mad fire. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. It, it caught my attention to it. It's, the beat is good, and, like, the hook is nice. There's, it's not all, like, like it, it, not every part of it is a, is a, like I said, a hit. Like, not every part quite hits right. Uh, but I think the hook works well and the instrumental is definitely fire. 
Uh, also, the choreography is really tight, but that's EXO. So, so <laughs> like, you, yeah. you, 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 you expect that. Uh, but I think overall good. Also, uh, I like, I, I, I kind of uh, put in the, uh, you'll see in the show notes, I put both the Korean and Chinese version because the Chinese version is the only one you'll get lay in it. <laughs> Also, uh, and by let you get lay in it, you get two lines, all of two lines worth of lay in it, uh, yeah. which I categorize in comments and at least one, maybe not two, maybe two comment sections as this was lay's, uh, courtesy. I'll pretend I'm still an EXO for you SM. As long as you'll let me not have to actually be an EXO <laughs> thing this is his appearance. Because he's certainly not going to be going to music shows. He's, I mean, he's he's in China. Once once you go to China, you never come back. <laughs> <laughs> once you start once you start your Chinese career, especially if you are Chinese, you just never come back. That's right. It's a, that's a it's a long haul. Yeah, yeah. The uh, us FX fans know that. <laughs> all right. Um, and the pristine fans I will gotta, know that soon too. <laughs> um all right so i got i got well you put this in here but i i probably would have ended up putting it in here as well so uh it is come and gone for for worlds of league of legends um and and usually around that time they always do some kind of new release um k-pop has kind of been a thing that's always been around league of legends but it hasn't always necessarily been a thing of league of legends uh in the in the past the closest we've got is one of the character skins is very reminiscent of a girl's generation costume um but this one this time around for the um whole world's uh fucking advertisements is the word we'll use because i can't say the other word um for the whole world's advertisements they decided to to blend these two worlds um of k-pop and league of legends so they they took four of the characters and essentially made a k-pop group and they went out and got uh a bunch of well not a bunch but they they went and got some former idols um to well, current do idols. the vocals and current current idols um to do the vocals as representative of this formed k-pop group so it's it's kind of been this whole thing um it has actually brought a lot of the player base back oddly enough <laughs> um i know a lot of people who have now come back to League of Legends because of, of this song and and promotion and and skins and things like that that they're selling. So like Yeah. K K pop K pop's a good fucking a good selling point. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's uh, they it's KDA. Uh is the the, the, KDA, the yeah. made the fictional group. Uh and like it's it's what it is it's like Two people I'd never heard of, but I guess they like they had like they have followings uh, on the internet. I guess they're internet famous. They're influencers. I guess uh, Madison Beer and Jara Burns, um, who are singers and who are internet personalities as well. Uh, and they got two members of G Idol, uh, the rookie mm-hmm. group. They got Soyeon and Mian. Uh, and I think it works well. So Yun is fantastic. And I think she's, she's winning a lot of people over with like her performance. Uh, she, she won a lot of people over, especially like at the live performance at world. Uh, just cause like she kind of had this like really cool, like approach to her character and her, the, the skin for her character, whatever they're doing with that is pretty badass. Um, and yeah, the song is just <laughs> Which- solid. Ooh. Which is also very, very funny because uh so in that video you you see the skin uh you see all the skins and there's there's a character called Akali yes. who is the one that's kind of more hip hop and when she's on the subway her her outfit glows. Yeah. Right? Didn't do doesn't do that in game, right? <laughs> no. And I swear, Riot is not a Riot is not a the type of like company that like is very 
oh, hey, you know, we fucked up. We got you guys. They're usually like, no, it's supposed to be that way. Um, but somebody must have been throwing rocks at their windows and breaking shit because they put out a press release like, uh, look, uh, we uh, we understand we fucked up. We're putting the glowing thing in there as soon as we can. I don't even know how we're supposed to code this, but it's going to be in there. Stop throwing rocks. Yes. <laughs> Like, bro, you, you did the thing with the glow-in-the-dark uh, spray paint. Yo, give us the glow-in-the-dark spray paint. <laughs> like, yeah. We, did, we, just, we just thought it would be a cool thing for the music video. Um, and what else? Uh, also, yeah, the they also had a really cool performance at, at Worlds. Uh, and it was like they, they used AR as well for it. Yeah. So like they had the the characters appear on stage, and then uh, which had to be confusing to everyone in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> they had to like because turn. unlike holograms, but like they use at Coachella, that's for the that's for the cameras. Yes. Everyone else just saw the people who were singing go way off to the sides. Like what? Why are you not in the center of the stage? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think they I think they were showing it on the on the screens, but that's weird too because you're like watching the, and then you realize wait, oh we're supposed to what? Uh, yeah, they're trying to watch the stage, but then you're trying to turn watch the screen. Yeah. It's like all right, wait, you have to remember which time you're supposed to like pay attention to which part. Um, also, it's very it was very obvious who uh, uh which two uh, uh girls have training in a uh, group choreography and which ones don't oh yeah oh yeah because <laughs> <It's like, laughs> like, i was like i was like man there looks like there should be way more to this dance than there do oh they simplified it for somebody <laughs> yeah and like you know the it, 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 and uh, yeah, <laughs> like it was somebody, uh, somebody hasn't been yelled at for a year and a half for that fucking or for, one two step. <laughs> yeah, um, one two, you're off beat. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was uh, it was uh, it was it was kind of obvious, but which is understandable. These the the two people that accompanied uh, the G Idol members, Madison Bur- Madison Beer and Jay Bur- Jerry Burns, are not. K-pop idols, <laughs> they they didn't go through five year, five seven thousand years of K-pop training and gotten millions of pieces of choreography drilled into their skulls. So the fact that they kind of more or less just nailed it, and even though they very much had two different versions of the choreography going on at the same time, that's fine. They're they're this is not what you know they have to do. They don't need to do to be do this. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of like interesting to watch on that respect. Um, uh, but yeah. Speaking of, last but not least, speaking of choreography and stuff. Yeah. Last but not least. Um, all right. So let's talk about this. So, um, shit. We've been, we've been talking about this, this solo for Jenny, uh, coming up and, as, as much as I don't want to give them credit, I kind of want to give them credit because the song is called Solo and it has all these these wait meanings of, of Solo in it because it's like moving on from a bad relationship. So everybody, obviously, because it's YG, took it to mean the wrong thing when they heard yeah. like, oh, Jenny Solo. Um, but I feel like it's one of those things that air so slightly backfired because the song isn't spectacular and i think kind of going down that route of that almost like kind of little on the nose tongue-in-cheek kind of thing with your promotion right um i think at that point the song needs to be like amazing like and I don't think I don't think this song is as bad as you think it is, but I don't think it's bad. I just 
it was just I wasn't really feeling it, but yeah, it just it didn't. Yeah, me no, I I actually I actually like it, but it's definitely not anything to write home about. It's not something I'm gonna be like, oh shit, check this out. This isn't like I'm still gonna be like, you know, check out Blackpink, but I'm not gonna be like, oh, you know that chick from Blackpink, check this. You know what I mean? Like that's what I mean by like amazing. It has to be amazing, like like do 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 is amazing you you show that to people to show that to people yeah um i would say like the big thing for me I think the big thing for me i think it just uh it's a little bit it it very much uh, the sound the, the instrumental just doesn't really kind of like grab me all that much it's mm-hmm. nice but it doesn't really grab me um the song itself uh, just overall, it's you know, it's kind of just there, and I think the biggest thing, and I think that's been talked about in, in a lot of places, is that it feels like it was a song that uh, Teddy wrote for the, uh, when he was working with Sunmi. Teddy wrote for her like comebacks, like, and it was just this was the song that got turned down, and and she did Siren instead, or something like that. Uh, some other person I think uh, had uh, had it even better where they called it a budget gashina. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's like which is like I, I can definitely feel that and honestly if I wanted like I almost feel like if I want this song if I'm like man I want to get into this song I just like go check out Gashina or <laughs> or uh or heroin uh the song heroin uh not the drug uh also you know also the video is kind of uh a little silly uh, I do feel for her because apparently she's uh, she uh, seems to be in love with the guy with the main character from The Quiet Man, uh, and uh, I feel for anybody that feels connected to The Quiet Man in any way whatsoever. I still don't understand how that got, game got made. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, but uh, yeah, it, it's 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 okay. I think uh, she she you, looks great. She looks great. So, so you, when I listen to this, you you know what it kind of makes me think. After after what you just said, I I don't think Jenny can carry an individual track i don't think she has that persona i don't think she has the vocal range for that to uh yeah honestly i i i want to like them but i don't think any anybody in blackpink does <laughs> like they just don't have the stage experience and the and the presence and the confidence yeah Cause, cause, like, I, I just turned it on, like, as we were just talking, it, and I'm like, you know what? The instrumental isn't that bad. There, there's some spots it could hit a little bit harder. You know what I mean? Like, like the drop I, could I, be a little bit more interesting, like the, the you yeah. Know. And then I'm, I think back to like this type of song in in other people's hands, like, like I think about. Kiana doing this. I think about CL doing this, right? That that drop would hit so much harder. Their vocal range would go so, you know, would 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 match because it would go up. It would like like they they would put so much more energy. Like she's she's kind of monotone throughout this, you know, in 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 a sense like yeah. But it just makes me feel like I don't I don't know I don't really, really know how to feel about this. I think, I think it just, it just, it comes down to this. I think, I think, uh, maybe somebody other than Teddy needs to be making music for YG. <laughs> like, I think he's run out of, I think he's, I think he's either spread thin or run out of ideas. Uh, and, and Blackpink need to, Give, be given a chance to develop well need I, I don't know if I should say need because again this song is gonna succeed this song has already succeeded it's a huge hit they're doing fine with their modeling and with their commercial endorsement gigs and doing all that as like basically models who sing or dance um 
So I don't know if I should say need, but I wish they were given some time to develop as performers. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I want to, uh, cause I, you know, I, I like, I really like, I really enjoy Blackpink songs, but every time I see them perform, like, it's just, man, it's just kind of like disheartening a little, a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's kind of it. Uh, I think, I think if I were to like, I, as I take over, I wanted to kind of, I have a couple of songs. Uh, I have a couple of songs. I, and I, I would say like, if I were to kind of compare, cause I think one of the things like presence and kind of putting a personality and even like have, and then pair it with a stronger, like instrumental, um, I'm bringing, uh, I'll talk about in on my first track, uh, Hyoyeon, or just Hyo, aka DJ Hyo, uh, collaborating with Three Lao, uh, for punk right now. This is kind of this is her new, like, solo track. And it's a fun track. And I think it's, it has a lot has a lot going for it it's a, it's a fun song mm -hmm. uh she kind of like owns the personality of the song even if it's a little bit silly uh but if you kind of appreciate the silliness of it uh and they kind of like even with moments like her going i'm so reckless like the eartha kit rolling over ours uh overall the song has uh, is just it's just kind of like a a nice entertaining like club banger with like a good drop that that kind of gets you move get you moving a little bit and has a nice like has a nice beat bass feel to it and has like a nice like a uh, little effects going for it and you know the dancing in the video is fun and it's very danceable very fun not not too it's not so much an epic uh comeback track uh as much as it's just a fun club banger uh, and a nice addition to her, to, to hear you line up. And I think the, the, it, you almost feel like you realize the veteran presence a little bit, <laughs> like just in the fact that, uh, Hyoyeon is able to like, even with empir you could even say empirically less, empirically less good singing less good singing quote unquote if you really want to kind of get into this and she has some effects on her voice and she doesn't go for like like vocal gymnastics or like even in like try to impress she just kind of embodies like just kind of focuses on the personality of song and i think that is to the strength of the song i don't know what, what did you think kaz i mean i don't know i don't I liked it, but it's just kind of all over the place a little bit. Yeah. Like it's just like they got mad experimental, and they were just like, "Yo, let's try this. What's the sound? I don't know. Throw it the fuck in there." <laughs> like, um, yeah. But I I do agree with kind of those things you said. It's it's, but I I think that is due to that two people coming together probably. You know, not not the most time in the world, and just kind of being like, "Yo, let's let's try this. Yo, let's try this. Yo, that sounds dope." Like nobody's really willing to say no, but it's just kind of, kind of. I like this. I like that. Oh shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it, it, it makes for a fun experience. Uh, and I think the fact that even this, uh, even this, like the fact that if I felt this was more solid than the. Than the much the super hyped solo debut of uh, one of like of Jenny, it's like I think it says a lot about the the Jenny solo. But uh, I think it's a fun song, and I think it's worth checking out. Uh, yeah, I'm liking, still, yeah, I'm liking I'm liking I'm liking style. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, all right, moving on to another track that is that had only you know. Uh, for, for another track for a back group and a debut that had a lot of hype uh, behind it, of course. Uh, the the ladies of Eyes One. Uh, yes, that's how you pronounce it. Eyes One. Was it Eyes One? 
Uh, it's not iZone. <laughs> they even put the little asterisk <laughs> in between the Z and the O just to make sure nobody calls it iZone just because they don't want to get in trouble with uh, certain iProduct manufacturers. Uh, finally debuted, you know, Produce 101 Season 3. Or, oh, no, not, I should say Produce 1. Produce 48, 48 wrapped up, and we got our group of t- uh, 12 girls. Uh, I... St- I cannot tell you who's in the group. I'm sorry. That's still a process. <laughs> That's always a process with every new group. You, you 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 take your time. You go seek out. And you learn the different members. You learn, you know, you start to identify who's who. I mean, it, I, fucking, there wasn't that many members in FX, and it still took me forever. And now I can't remember <laughs> much of FX. Yeah. So yeah. it happens. It happens, but uh, they're still here. Just t- the twelve members uh, are here, uh, and their song "La Vian Rose." Uh, it's a it's a pretty nice song. It's a it's a nice song. It's a nice solid debut. I think that the uh, a lot of it works more than it doesn't. Um, it's yeah. Uh, it's not you know it it doesn't all work it's it can be hit or miss but i think more works than it doesn't than doesn't work uh there's like, some solid parts so this is definitely generic k-pop but it's done well it's done so goddamn well like yeah. and and we talk so much about things being generically k-pop but it, i don't always mean that in a bad way sometimes like, like, I mean it in a bad way when there's a group that has shown they can be more than that. But when it's your debut and you do generic K-pop, but you do it good, that's a good start to me, yeah. I think. You develop a foundation, you know, especially mm-hmm. when like you, you got to develop a solid foundation. Um, I definitely like this better than, than Dream Girls. For sure, the, you know the IOI first song, uh, and I've, yeah. I'm, this is a lot more of a solid foundation than they than they did, and a little bit I think even more solid uh, foundation musically than a one hundred and one. I think because they had a, I don't know if I necessarily, I think energetic was great, but it took a, took a little bit to get to their like breakthrough moment. I think they're start uh, I was one is starting a little bit more solidly as far as music wise. Um, yeah, and I think you know it, it, the the visuals are nice, the the videos nice. Uh, it, it it does it does leave me thinking. Okay, you know if if because if IOI, you know they they didn't start off great, but they found a nice rhythm. They found their their songs, uh, and ultimately I ended up enjoying the group and and uh, kind of uh, bummed out when when it had to end. Uh, and then you know of course one on one. Are, uh, found their sound and always already had their their fan base, but found their sound and I think honestly have great songs. You know, like for as much as they, they yeah. have a lot of hype and have the crazy fandom, they also have really great songs. Like and a really solid foundation, a really solid discography, and we'll see when uh, you know when they, they wrap up and whatnot. So I, I, there's a good track record for the produce uh, produced. Uh, groups so this is solid and i'm looking for i mean to- uh, like in in a way right like one of the bigger groups that 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 are around uh monster x in a sense is a produced type group you know what i mean like like just not by produce show <laughs> right you know what i mean but like they had the whole the whole YouTube series about, or or was it on TV in Korea? Maybe. I don't know. Um, they enough but they had that whole thing. You know what I mean? Like they blurred all those brands. <laughs> must have been. Um, but it's just one of those things, right? Like produced, like like K-pop is highly produced, right? And and I think to American fans they don't think about that as much but sometimes sometimes you do it right sometimes you get the pieces right you know what i mean like 
sometimes your your that RTS strategy works out, and you 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 fucking go for the right build, yeah. and things just work out. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I uh, I put in, I put in an article. Uh, so I put in an article because it was like an interesting thing about the song. Uh, the fact that CLC uh, a group you know out of Cube. Uh, did the, one of the original demos, and we're gonna and and looking at the reality show that they have, where a big part of that is them prepping for a summer comeback that never happened. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like lucky tied into this, uh, and ended up going to Eyes One. Uh, okay, I guess they kind of like decided, and there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, but I think the it's very interesting to point that out because it. I mean, if you, it's a nice study into thinking like, man, if CLC had put it out, it would not have succeeded nearly as much as it as the song has succeeded now. If you really think about it, and there's a big difference in the same song going between one group or another, and based on you know who's you know who's hype, you know, like based on uh, visibility and hype and how much uh, all of that plays into things uh and you know the struggle it is to be a a a not as well known or not as uh like i mean could you could you think about monster x doing fantastic baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, like, or if you just, like <laughs> before they you know like or like or like uh, or like fucking uh, B two B doing yeah. like 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 Jada or doing like fake love. Uh, sure, it would have been a, it still would have been a dope song, but uh, it wouldn't have been like the world Billboard you know smashing hit as without the momentum that you know BTS had going for them, like. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's about you know who's who has the song, so I just thought that was was interesting and worth checking out. Uh, watching out uh, articles on Asian Junkie, uh, have it in the show notes. Um, but yeah, last but not least, Drunken Tiger is back, uh, and mm -hmm. for the for the final time as Drunken Tiger, this is the final album, final release. Uh, of Drunken Tiger, uh, presumably as uh, Tiger JK puts the moniker to bed uh, and moves forward to kind of whatever he wants to do post this. Uh, and the song is Mantra. And it's it's a sol it's a really fantastic kind of a throwback vibe. Well, not kind of a throwback, super throwback vibe. Uh, just the boom bap. Uh, the boom bap is back. Uh, it's just, just Tiger, uh, on a mic with a solid, with a fantastic beat, uh, just spitting rhymes, spitting bars, and then there's a music video with all the Feel Good fam, uh, making a cameo, which is fantastic, uh, yeah. and it's just overall just solid and fun to listen to, yeah. uh, it just feels good <laughs> to bring that back to boom bap, boom bap sound. Bring back the old. Yeah, it definitely, sound. definitely is like just that that early '90s kind of before gangster rap sound. Um, but it, it's just I, I I kind of always in in this this realm of like who I think holds importance in Korean hip-hop i always kind of forget about drunken tiger until he reminds me he exists yeah. <laughs> and then i'm like oh my god how did i forget drunken tiger yeah yeah drunken tiger is uh is 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 an icon for sure uh and has a lot of God, bangers throughout his history i think he hasn't always been like it, 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 at, like we've had our you know kind of we've had our downs i think with uh uh drunken tiger sometimes or mfdty but i think overall they've just had a really great 
uh, discography, especially if you go back to like bangers like Monster, <laughs> like uh, Korean yeah. Monster, like uh, it, it's just it's just the 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 legacy is really great, and uh, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see what he comes, what what it goes, what is in store going forward. Now the drunken tiger has been killed. And now we go forward to what whatever Tiger JK or MFBTY do, uh, yeah, because it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. But yeah, I think this song, but definitely worth checking out. I I'm looking for I'm I'm gonna go ahead and probably give it get it get around to when I can checking out the whole album because I know he has a collaboration with <laughs> RM on it. Uh, your boy Ratmon. Uh, it also has other collaborations and features, which are which uh, I believe are are worth check- should be worth checking out. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, Drunken Tiger, the end of an era, <laughs> or just yeah. You know, an, or I just mean, it, it's just yeah, probably more a new beginning than than an end. Yeah, yeah, more than anything, it's just that. So it's just, it's really cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Also, he's auditioning for his uh, the the next Ghost Rider remake, which <laughs> is fun. Uh, I wish him luck. Uh, but yeah, that's it for what's new. Uh, we're gonna switch on over to the headline segment. So uh, catch us on the flip side. Uh, 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 uh. Press the wrong two buttons together. <laughs> uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our headline segment here on Hallyujuku, mm-hmm. where we talk about some topical, topical topics, things going on in the world of East Asian pop culture, uh, a lot of uh, hullabaloo and uh, shenanigans uh, to discuss for sure. Uh, but first of all, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, something really cool uh, that dropped, a really cool teaser uh, that dropped for a new Netflix uh, series. Uh, so Netflix, we, we talked about it a while back when it was first like announced. Uh, but Netflix uh, is coming out with a Korean drama, a Korean uh, period drama uh, called Kingdom. Uh, it's going to be a per, like a a you know kind of like a period drama, but with zombies. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's it looks really nice. Uh, it has a lot of really good uh, mm-hmm. actors and you know, actors in it. Um, it like like I like I really like the 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 visuals of it. Like the 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 kind of like the visual tone and the cinematography and like uh, and like the I don't know like the the mood of it. Uh, what what were your impressions of the of the trailer? I haven't uh, fully watched it yet, um, but I mean, I, I, I want to say Netflix can do no wrong, but it's always depending on in the right hands kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, but from what I what I saw, like it definitely has a, a good cinematic feel to it, and it'll definitely be interesting, right? Because because doing doing period pieces is not unfamiliar to Korean television, right? Or any television for that matter. Here in America, we're, we're so used to doing Westerns and, and all kinds of shit. Um, so this in, in their sense is, is something that is known to them and then throwing a wrench into it as probably as overdone as people think it is as zombies. I think, putting zombies or or something we're used to being in present times over and over and over and over again in in a different time like this is definitely interesting yeah and kind of like i like playing with the zombie idea and then also playing like it's partly politics partly zombie like thriller uh mm-hmm. it's still still pretty fantastic um yeah, no matter what zombie zombie 
thrillers now and and pretty much forever have always come down to um have always come down to being about people yeah. how people react how people react to each other what people decide to do in these situations you know what i mean so it it's definitely it's definitely something to think about what 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 people in that time would do how people would react especially in a culture like korea you know like so it's, it's just <laughs> yeah like so it, i i i think it's I, as cheesy as people think zombies are right now i think it's a, still an interesting storytelling motif because it's something that can overrun you it's something it's something that has rules but people never have rules so so yeah. it's interesting yeah. And I think oh, the, it's still worth checking out, even if you feel like you are drained of of zombies. Yeah, and I think it's definitely. Gonna, uh, I'm definitely going to be intrigued. I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, I like. I also like at the end of this. Uh, in the, uh, I linked to the Simpy article that had the the teaser. Go check out the the trailer. It's really cool. Uh, like at the end of this, mm-hmm. uh, the the director, uh, the the writer. I mean, Kim and he uh, was talking about in Kingdom. People's necks get cut off. They bleed, and mean many people die. Uh, these kinds of expressions were impossible for existing drama pa- platforms, and it was difficult because there were many cruel scenes. I came to do, do this on the Netflix platform because of the freedom of expression, which I think is going to be, is a, a I think a telling line about how Netflix is starting to s- kind of snap up these dramas that. Uh, and these uh these you know these people these creators uh and locking them down and kind of almost kind of like snatching them up from the the traditional drama platforms and especially even tv kind of what they've done in here and yeah and i mean they've the, done that here with with shows like narcos and other things that probably wouldn't necessarily exist on tv and and making i mean cable did that a long time ago right like cable was this place that people could go and tell stories that you couldn't tell on terrestrial tv right but then even cable got to a point where there were there were things you couldn't do um, and then for a long time, YouTube was a place that a lot of creators went when there wasn't a place to go for a creative outlet. And I think now with the plethora of platforms that exist on the internet and the way things are, I think Netflix, I, I, I still think YouTube has a lot of, of good content on there in, in, in a realm of produced content, not just like don't 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 inundate me with like oh it's just vlogs and, and this and this and that but i still think there's a lot of great produced content on there but i think now you have a platform in something like netflix that i think as we go a lot of the things that we see on netflix are going to be this rotation of of tv shows and other things and more more and more and more netflix originals you know what i mean like of of content that they're paying for because you have so many people trying to diverge into having their own platforms you know like disney is pulling shit off of netflix because they want to have their own streaming platform and 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 I, i i always start to think like oh man what's gonna happen to netflix and then things like this pop up where i'm like oh netflix will be fine because they'll just they'll just start making more and more content for themselves yeah so it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be cool uh to see how they how many uh how, how much more they do as far as like uh they're they're definitely investing big in asian drama and asian uh shows uh, especially Korean dramas, because they're gonna, they're they're going after uh, not just Korea, but as a consumer market, but they're getting those Korean dramas and going after Asia as a whole, because uh, they they know that reach that the Korean dramas have. Uh, so it's, it's gonna be cool. 
Uh, but yeah, speaking of things, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I have no segue for this. Uh, Mama Blue fans clash with uh, Rainbow Bridge World over group's working conditions. Uh, Mama Blue's fandom has announced protest against girl groups agencies against the girl groups agency RBW. Uh, this is uh, an article to, of course, Simpy. Uh, Simpy.com. Previously on November 9th, Mama Moose Fan Union requested Ray RBW to postpone Mama Moose's upcoming December concert due to the girl group's hectic schedule since releasing their special single Paint Me on January 4th earlier this year. Uh, their schedule for the rest of the year included two mini album releases, seven concert shows, a Japanese debut, 70 local events, overseas performances, solo album releases, and solo concerts. Uh, this in, is in addition to their upcoming comeback with their eighth mini album, Blue uh, S or Blues, uh, on November 29th, as well as their winter concert following their two week long promotions for the album. Uh, the fan union claimed that the reason that for the anger was RBW's continuous and sincere feedback throughout the group's recent activities, in particular the reuse of gold concert images and notice that included broken reservation links for the group's official so showcase further fueled fans' anger with the agency. There were also many complaints about the management of RBW's artists as the Mamo members have been frequently injured while carrying out their numerous schedule despite the schedules despite opposition from, from fans. Um, uh, RBW had a response and said the venue, uh, was the venue of the concert was finalized in August and we have been planning and pr practicing for the concert. So then a detailed poster and pages and for the concert will be released on the 14th, uh, through the reservation website. If they decide to postpone or cancel the concert, we will receive a penalty <laughs> on so on and so forth. Uh, they kind of give an, you know, answer that they, there are the health of the artists is a top priority yeah. and things like that. Um, they the fan union highlighted that the target of the boycott was so they decided they're gonna boycott the concert uh they said you know they highlighted that the boycott was uh targeted towards rbw not mama moo and they said that they will su support the song come back um and yeah and the you know agency had a response to all this uh and things like that well so moo moo's kind of standing up kind of demanding you know that a little bit of you know better treatment for the artists um especially this particular year because you know usually it always felt like uh mama Moo had a pretty good relationship with their label uh but it did you know that they, they've kind of been noticing a little bit of extra work so definitely it's definitely cool to kind of see the fans demand better for the artists and put their, you know, put some hard, like, you know, threats into their demands, like straight boycott the concert. Uh, what were your impressions kind of looking at all this? I mean, that's just, it's one of the things that we've talked about, right? We've talked about the, if, if, if you really care, do something about it. You know what I mean? Like, like kind of thing or i've talked about that and this is that this is this is that thing for me right where where people people vocalize things and say things a lot but they're they're not actually willing to do something right so their fans saw this list of things and they were like bro that's ridiculous that's just over the top that's way too fucking much you know what i mean like and they were like we we want to vocalize that we think that's the reason that they've suffered injury that's the reason that that certain things maybe don't turn out as well as they're supposed to because you put them on this schedule that is just like ridiculous um so yeah i'm 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 down with fans caring this much about about groups that they claim they love yeah, and uh, it's interesting because they got an interesting response. They did get a nice, like, um, like they, 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 you know, kind of a nice statement. Pretty, it's sort of boilerplate, but still nice. Uh, kind of taking ownership, like say, "Hey, we hear you. Uh, you know, we'll, you know, we'll try to make do better things like that." Uh, there's also the interesting part that on their fan cafe. 
uh, Mamamoo, uh, not Mamamoo, uh, the the label, uh, you know, RBW ask fans mm-hmm. to vote on if they, you know, if they make any changes to the concert, including maybe even canceling uh, and things like that. They kind of like, uh, uh, you know, the agency said, revealed that they will finalize whether or not to hold the group's concert based on votes by fans. Uh, the agency responded that they kind of postponed the concert due to the group's future schedule, release schedules in December. However, on November 15th, R- uh, RBW revealed another statement. Uh, the agency stated, Mamamoo's uh, uh, four-season fall-winter concert has been under preparation for a long time. The preparations are still being made to create a better, more unique concert. However, as we understand and respect fans' deep concerns, we decided to proceed to a vote where we can gather the ideas and thoughts of fans directly. Uh, end quote. RBW's position is that they will decide whether or not to hold the concert based on the results of votes from fans. The voting will end on November 16th, uh, noon Korean Standard Time, uh, which I believe that is now. Uh, no, I don't know as of yet what the results are. I guess once once the polls are closed and all the votes are counted and we have any recounts if we need it, we'll know. Uh Let's see. Once all, once all, once all the counties have uh, reported, uh, we'll know. But things are still too close to call. Uh, or, I don't know. Uh, RBW added, "We felt that it is meaningless to hold a concert that fans who love Mama Blue do not want and do not want to participate in. We will take responsibility for the cause of this incident and try to become better in order for an incident like this to never happen again." So, it's interesting that they're gonna just like. Put it out to a vote. Uh, and like I said, we don't know exactly w- w- what they've decided. Uh, no word yet, at least. Uh, I mean, I could refresh the SoomP website or you know, things like that. But, you know, we'll, I guess we'll know soon. Uh, but, I don't know. What, what, were your, what was your impression on, the, on their response this is basically saying you guys decide uh i think that's the the like uh i i think that's definitely the oh shit we don't know what else to do you know what i mean like so it's the it, it's it's the somebody's like you you fucked up and you're like you fucked up and they're like what do you mean <laughs> like <laughs> you you just try to reverse it on them and so you're like Oh, okay. What would you do then? <laughs> <laughs> Can you just you just back out slowly? And they're like, "What? No." <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maddie. <laughs> um. Yes. But good job for good big ups to Mam- Mama Moo's fan union. Uh, fighting the the proletariat of the the K-pop bourgeois. <laughs> uh, yeah, big ups to fan, the big ups to fandom trying to do right by their group, uh, which is really cool. All right, moving on. So there's been a lot of craziness happening with BTS. Uh, it all started with a dumb T-shirt. A really dumb, stupid T-shirt, uh, which is, of course, uh, G-Min uh, had a shirt, kind of a while ago, and just recently kind of got people's attention. Um, you know, a big part of it. Uh, so it's it's a it's a shirt that uh, commemorates uh, the liberation of Korea, uh, which is fine. Yeah, it kind of like has the has the uh had the date and had that you know had that that look uh the unfortunate part of that is that part of the design included a a picture of the bombing of hiroshima uh which was uh one of again one of the one of the big moments and uh, that you know spurred those the end of world war ii and thus you know the liberation of korea at least the first one uh which is like, I'm gonna say a misstep. I'm gonna say a dumb move, <laughs> a dumb thing to wear. 
a dumb thing to celebrate. You know, probably, you know, nobody, probably something everybody regrets. Uh, yeah. Especially, especially because, you know, we, yeah, yeah, that end of the war, but also a lot of civilians died. Yeah. It's not good. Also, tw- at least 20,000 Koreans were among those civilians that died that day. Because they, they, they kind of used a lot of, like, Korean labor in Japan during World War. Kind of, they had all this free labor. All these volunteers, quote-unquote. Uh, so, there was a lot of Koreans that died that day. So, it's not exactly... Yeah, tens of thousands actually. Uh, Koreans perished in the arena bombings as well. So, so which is and and uh, kind of like you know that uh, I should probably add these other articles that caused music station in Japan to kind of cancel an appearance by uh, BTS. Uh, you know, TV Asahi was uh, kind of direct, cited that specifically. Um, a little bit, you know, the, there's also a back and forth a little bit, but kind of the relations between, uh, Korea and B, and B, T, Korea and BTS. I think it's a little bit more, to, you know, the, I should, I'm, I'm going to, I'll, I'll include in the, the, in the show notes, uh, the other Asian or Asian Junkie article where he kind of like talks about how all the other mitigating factors, uh, especially a little bit of Japanese nationalism. Uh, cause, uh, it also kind of compounded with, uh, Simon, the Simon Weisenthal Center, uh, denouncing BTS, at least based partially on questionable info, uh, the kind of citing the t-shirt, also citing, uh, a, an old picture from about 2014, uh, saying, you know, the... Uh, kind of pointing out the hat that had a bit of a questionable imagery, uh, which is, uh, some people kind of pointed out the swastika. Other people has also have also pointed out that it also is the, uh, a combination of the, uh, Reichsadler, Reichsadler, uh, and the SS death head logo, uh, which is... You know, again, another <laughs> questionable thing. Well, yeah, uh, but it's also it's also in in that it's also of the those boy people trying to point it out. <laughs> yeah, it's also the boy London logo, which I'm sure you could just go to their website and see what the hat actually looks like, rather than trying to zoom in to an image of a hat that isn't the focal point of a picture of Ratmon, and then play Pictionary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it a swastika? It's a swastika. I think it's a swastika. Just like, no, it's not a swastika. So there, there, like, there is some questionable parts of the thing, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, and then kind of point going to this uh, to this imagery of, of, at this Sateji concert, uh, kind of like connecting it to like Nazi symbolism, uh, despite the fact that it's very obviously like visual, critical, like visually critical iconography spent meant to uh meant to to comment and criticize on specific things like uh the education system and kind of like the, t- the totalitarian feel of the education system in korea and kind of like uh you know standardized yeah. education and cramming and things like that and uh Kind of like, you know, especially the, so, music, the clock and things like that. So kind of taking what's supposed the, to be a specific artistic critical imagery and use it like to make, oh, they're, they're Nazis or some shit. I'm like, no. Is, is, it, is it a little heavy handed? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little ham fisted, but. Like, I will say in, in this, looking at, looking at the stuff that's there. Are there are there missteps? Yes. Right? Like you said, with the t-shirt, the t-shirt's a misstep. Are some of these other things witch hunts? 
oh fuck yes this is the salem witch trials and you're trying to drown somebody to prove that they're a witch which yeah. which in both ends of those drownings never turns out good you drowned them and if they die oh they weren't a witch you drowned them and if they happen to live must have been a witch so now yeah. we kill them <laughs> like, yeah, and they they specifically cite like super ultra nationalist Japanese account as evidence. Like it's like uh which is yeah, okay. Uh yeah. And it's one of those things I I've, I've I've told PD this many a time because of of past relationship things. It's just one of those things that 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 Korea Japan like nationalism stuff and then 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 when you throw china in there too i just i i fucking step out of that room quickly yes. <laughs> it's just it's like you just like bruh. i'm just, you know, <laughs> awkward moonwalk yeah <laughs> oh shit what's that <laughs> well, I'm, I, oh, oh i think i think oh Oh, 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 it's, it's vibrating. I, th- I think they have my my coffee order ready. I'm 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 gonna I'm, just, I'm gonna go get my coffee. Yeah. order. that was easy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, that's, it's one of those things you never you never want to find yourself in the middle of when when people get on the ends of those things. It gets uh, crazy. Yeah. Um, I will say the really cool thing: a big hit entertainment uh, released an apology about these things, and uh, I. I I'll, I'll go through the statement. Um, let me see. I'm gonna kind of skim through. Uh, it's a fairly big statement. Uh, so but kind of let's go through it. Uh, they start off kind of laying out. Okay, these are the issues. First, the artist had worn a shirt, the image of the atomic bomb. Second, that our artist had worn a hat with Nazi symbolism, an old photo shoot for a Korean media outlet. And third, that our, our artist has said to have used uh, flags with Nazi imagery. Uh, and so this is our statement. Uh, in, in BTS's promotions, as well as promotions of all of our artists, Big Hit does not support war or the atomic bomb. We oppose those things and did not mean to cause harm to the victims of the atomic bomb, and this will not change. Uh, in BTS's promotions, as well as the promotions of all of our artists, Big Hit does not support any form of totalitarian area, totalitarian, totalitarianism, including Nazism or any groups of radical political tendencies. We oppose these things and had no intention of causing harm to the historical victims of these groups, and this will not change. This is our apology for the issues mentioned above. Uh, about the item with the clothing and atomic uh, bomb imagery, as we stated above, it was not done with any intent, and we have confirmed that the shirt itself was not produced with the intention of causing harm to the victims of the atomic bomb. However... Uh, it is obvious that harm may have been caused unintentionally to the victims when the shirt was worn due to our lack of foresight and preparation. We sincerely apologize for potentially causing discomfort through the appearance of our artists being connected with atomic bomb imagery. About the hat with Nazi symbolism being used in an old photo shoot, uh, as we st- have stated above, it, has not, it was not done with any intent. The clothes and accessories used in the photo shoot were given to us by the media outlet. Our artists ended up wearing them due to our inability to sufficiently check beforehand, and harm may have been caused unintentionally to the victims of Nazism. <laughs> Uh, we sincerely apologize for not being discovered. I'm kind of doing the read in between the lines thing here, and it's like, I'm, I'm sorry you got bothered. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe. Uh, however we would like to clearly state that the responsibility for the these issues lies with big hit who was not able to fully support our artists our artists have to deal with many schedules and site conditions and responsibility for the above issues does not lie with them uh this is our statement on the issue i like that because like say yo that's on us uh, this is our statement on the issue of the concert performance. The concert in question, and I like this part, the concert in question was the 2017 anniversary concert of the legendary Korean artist uh, Teji. 
Uh, the performance in question was built around the social message of criticizing the reality of standardized education. The imagery on the flags was artwork without any question connection to Nazism. The message of the performance was to criticize the standardized totalitarian education system. The performance was became an issue because it was said that it was related to Nazism. This is not true at all, and in fact, the performance was meant to criticize that kind of totalitarian reality. Uh, totalitarian reality. Uh, Big Hit will do our best to reform these problems that have been raised. Our motto is to give comfort and emotion to the world through our music and our artists. Uh, it is a challenge for us to consider that many elements arise from living in an era of diversity of talents, but we are doing our best to fulfill that duty uh, in the future on the basis of our understanding of not only these issues, but of various social, c historical, cultural backgrounds. Big Hit and our artists will care more carefully consider the details of our promotions and that we do not cause harm to people. Once again, we apologize to people who were hurt by our lack of in dealing with these issues um okay first big hit will take the following steps in order to resolve these issues first we are contacting the atomic bomb victim associations in japan and korea to explain and apologize for the problems that we have raised that have been raised we have also sent a letter explaining and apologizing for the situation to the simon weisen hall center um yeah it is is you can read between the lines but yeah it is pretty apologetic and it's pretty much like this is also a big hit uh shielding the group and just kind of say yo mm -hmm. that's on us like just, if you're gonna get be mad be mad at us kind of like taking the heat off so the there, there's just a good one there in the middle of like the the clothes were given to us by the media outlet <laughs> like, yo, like i'm sorry we didn't fucking parse every stitch and be like this cross stitch here is it is it a nazi cross stitch <laughs> like, mm. it's a fucking clothing company like we can't fucking question every person about every item like yeah, especially the artists can't do it like especially after yeah it, this was 2014 they were just like debuted a year prior they certainly can't say anything <laughs> like they're yeah. not in a position but and then i love uh, i also love how defensive they were of their concert like they were like no this concert was meant to do this and you're not going to take that from us like yeah this like, is we'll what this concert was meant for this yeah like, we'll apologize for this and we'll apologize you know again this and this mea culpa you know we should have checked things a little bit better supported our artists a little bit better you know this this shirt is a bad idea we'll own that but yo this concert and this was our message and you're and it's not our problem if you can't understand our very heavy-handed obvious cr social criticism and think of it as you know think of it i try to interpret it in some other way because yeah that's y'all that's on y'all and you're not gonna take that away from us mm -hmm. so I, don't know, I think it's a pretty solid statement. It's very, it's very, very practiced and very detailed. But I, I it's why I'm, it's why I need a fucking I need a fucking writer, man. I need somebody to just stand behind me when I'm about to say some dumb shit and be like, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> Tell me what you want to say, and I'll say it. In, I'll say it in a good, in a good fucking lawsuit friendly way. <laughs> yes, a good old non lawsuit incurring friendly way. Yeah. We, we we ain't got none of that. Yeah. We, just, we, we ain't got Nah, I just say dumb shit. I just exactly. ain't got no lawsuits yet. Yeah. I think we, 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 look, 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 the, the thing we have going for us is that nobody nobody gives that much of a shit about us to sue us. <laughs> we've, yeah. we've got, no, we've got they the... No, I ain't got shit. You can see everything I got. I ain't got shit. Yes. I got, I got a bookshelf of CDs. That's, this is all I've got. Um... Uh, all right, Oof. I just, Oof. moving Oof. on, I just want to, so one quick, quick little thing I wanted to add on a high note, uh, courts rule in favor of Jung Hyo Sung in lawsuit with TS Entertainment, uh, the courts have ruled in favor of Jung Hyo Sung in her legal battle with, T legal battle with <laughs> TS Entertainment, two parties met at the Seoul Western District Court on November 14th, and the judge ruled to confirm the invalid, invalidity of of Jun Hyo Sung's exclusive contract with TS Entertainment. The ruling stated, quote, we confirm that the exclusive contract between Jun Hyo Sung uh, and TS Entertainment holds no validity. Uh, the defendant 
must pay the plaintiff uh, approximately 130 million won, which is about 115 grand, some of them give or take, uh, and the remaining down payments and unpaid wages, end quote. TS Entertainment will also have to cover 95% of legal fees, while Jun Hyo Sung uh, pays 5%. Earlier this year, Jun Hyo Sung revealed that she had departed from Secret and filed the lawsuit. Uh, and she stated that after receiving six million won, which about five grand in 2015, she had not received any payments since. Uh, with the court ruling in her favor, Jun Hyo Sung can now focus on her work with new agency Tommy and Partners Entertainment. Uh, she also uh, celebrated with the post um, and included the article in the show notes from Sumpi. Uh, this is, uh, kind of cool and surprising and, uh, and, and kind of super good news, especially considering that, uh, I think we talked about it. She didn't even want, <laughs> like, she literally was like, she didn't even want money, <laughs> uh, at mm -hmm. some point. She just wanted to be free. Like, I, I don't need you to pay me anything. Just let me be free. She was willing to take that. Uh, but then they, you know, they insisted and took it to court and they lost she should have should have did the the fucking i think whenever you win a nice big case like that you got to do the tupac walk out of the courtroom yeah. <laughs> the the george jefferson yeah. just out of the courtroom yeah it's just like a boss uh just do like a mm -hmm. little shuffle it's like do like like the like like those dudes in on uh, maury when they get told they're not the father he's just like <laughs> Ooh. Do the running man and shit. <laughs> uh, nah, you can't go that far. That's, 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 that's extra. You just got you just got a two pocket shoulders back. Do the like kind of the George Jefferson like I got off a murder trial. <laughs> <laughs> murder was the case that they gave me. Uh, well, did you have any thoughts on the uh, on Jun Hyo Sung's? Uh, no, I'm just happy for her. Uh, oh, hopefully things work out better with the new agency and then she's allowed to do the things that she wants to do. Uh, and then, I mean, it's, it's like we said, so when we talked about it before, she did, she just wanted her, her to be able to continue to work. Like she didn't, she didn't want undue payment. She didn't want any of that other shit. She just wanted to continue to be able to work and she gets that and extra. So there you go. Yep. Big ups. Yeah. Good job. Uh, so good luck to Hyosung, uh, who is really fantastic and talented, and she'll do great things. Uh, she'll do fun songs, uh, and I'm looking forward to what she does in the future. Uh, yeah, I think. All right. That being said, that brings us to the end of another fantastic episode of Halujuku. He, yeah. Kaz. What, what's what's going on? What's up? What's going on in your world? Too much, too much travel, too much bullshit, too much work. Even the travel has been work. Um, you told me. But yeah, uh, fucking, uh, fucking sportshotsandmans.com uh, for your fly-by-night sports fan needs. Uh, we've been talking about the football season. We've been talking about the Browns a lot lately because they fired everybody. Um, <laughs> uh <laughs> God damn it! Um, uh, talking about that and uh, just just kind of the the goings ons in sports and and the ridiculousness of of a lot of things that are happening in a lot of different sports. The fact that we might not have a uh, baseball in the future that's a big one. Yeah, it uh, keeps going the way it's going. Yeah. Uh, also, the fact that uh, have you have you guys talked about the fact that uh, WNBA players have gone on strike? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's interesting. Big, you know, big, seeing the women stand up for themselves. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so go I mean, that. I mean, the it, it's had to happen across hockey, across soccer. So it, it's gonna ha happen across all women's sports. Yeah. So look forward to that. Uh, SportsOddsOnDemand dot com. Uh, he's at King Kaz. Uh, I'm at PD Rave. Uh, the show, uh, we are Halujuku, uh, if you didn't know at this point. Uh, we're, Haliju we're at Halujuku. Uh, we're on Halujuku.com or kpoppodcast.com. If you want to share with your friends, real easy to say out loud, and people will, re re with will remember it. 
Um, well, didn't they tell you? Don't you know? Check us out. You know, we're on Rebelli.net for those other shows. Rebelli TV on YouTube for the visual version of the show. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. Uh, we're on many places where you can find podcasts. Um, you know, give us reviews. Give, give us feedback. Give it. You know, let us know what you think about what we talk about, what we discuss. Uh, do all the give things. It, give it to me straight, doctor. Um, like, share, subscribe, do all these things. Until next time. Why, I think you're crazy. Hasta los huevos. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>